Virgos, welcome. This is your end of November singles read. Meet the soulmate using the Gilded Terror Royale deck today. Inside in uh, our Cancun uh, urban jungle studio because of the rain mostly. Now it stopped, but man, it was coming down. <laughs> That's been too bad because it is a rainy season. Can't complain. But, um, it's pretty peaceful. Good energy here, guys. I did pre shuffle. I'll put a little energy on them here. This is a reading that's always positive because it asks simply who's the right one for you. So we're not going to talk about your next ex problem or next ex wife, next ex husband, but the one that's right for you. I think there's more than one myself. Um, there's a quiver maybe. And we're asking God, the universe here, load one up, guys. <laughs> because you're uh, single and wide open, totally single, completely single see with this one um, <clears throat> if you haven't check out the soul family read I'll put a link it's a little bit different manifestation spirituality read for whoever resonates um, that I do daily this one is for the one that's right for you so if you see the three of swords and nobody's breaking up with you everything's good everything's good we just want to describe your person here nice okay I don't read the bottom of the deck on this one. Justice. This is in the emotional position. We're going to have two cards for the emotional position. Justice over the Ten of Wands. Wow. Okay. Um, we look at the intellectual. Eight of Wands. And the Knight of Swords. Is, uh, Eight of Wands over the Knight of Swords. The emotional calm, intellectual, we're going to do love and romance, do that in a minute here, and then core values and lifestyle, and let's start here, guys, um, here uh, with the emotions, I see their childhood, uh, look for maybe stories they might tell about the childhood here, um, Libra Moon, I think, makes sense, um, do read the moon here, we've got justice, so, um, <clears throat> You know, and with the Ten of Wands coming uh, under it, um, this is a person that I believe they've decided not to get bogged down. I think their story from childhood is um, uh, they had either a parent or parents that they saw just kind of always struggling to sort of survive. And I think um, when you see this Eight of uh, Wands next to their moon here. This represents the sun energy for them and their intellect. Unconscious, conscious. Um, they want to get away from that energy, you know. Um, like, they don't want to just survive. You might say, uh, they don't want to survive, they want to thrive. Um, this could even manifest as, a, as energy, too, of a desire to have nice things around them, as nice as they can. Um, if they have a new apartment, new house, they would do everything under their power to make it seem inviting and warm. And it might accumulate art where it, it, in their ability, um, uh, plants, uh, their extra attention to the decor. Even like man or woman, this energy. Um, there's a, a, going to be a strong sense about them um, that uh, they, they don't want to give in to any feelings of like a vulnerability and weakness. Now Libra Moon too, um, they, as much like a Leo Moon like this, um, they don't like to do dark, they don't like to do negative, they won't do it, you know, <laughs> basically. Um, I guess if you force them. Mm -hmm. But with this sun here, this feels like a sad sun to me. We've got the Knight of Swords here, your horse coming in. Yeah. It could be a late degree sad sun. I get the feeling this could be a Mercury Venus with this person. I would even go so far to say that this Mercury might be in some kind of good alignment, like a 
uh, trine or something with um, the justice energy in Libra here. So this would be a, a, a this is a great I'm a Sag, so I wish I had an Aquarius Mercury um, because if you have this energy, uh, you could probably sit and think and concentrate. Um, it's not someone's going to have difficulty at school. Um, but with the Eight of Wands energy, it's like a very um, happy, combine it with the Libra Moon. I think like what you're going to have here when you meet this person, it's a really charming person who's always kind of, I didn't say their perfect set's the right one for you. They kind of, part of their nature is to just make everyone feel extra comfortable and so they're going to be disarming, charming, and just to be and present themselves as being extra comfortable. So they're the kind of exactly kind of person too. Like if you ask them how's things going, maybe they actually be in physical pain. They might smile and say, you know, it's, it's going pretty good. I might have to get home later or in a little bit here because uh, I got to get up early. You know, but they're like in excruciating pain or something. You know. Um, so a little bit of that energy, and sad we can do that anyway, it's just a push on, push on. Um, so, but they are someone that knows how to pursue things. Let's see where this is going. This looks to me like someone that could be classic sads, like risk taker. Um, so they might just keep throwing shit at the wall until something sticks. Uh, a lot of times, you know, people say, well, sads are lucky. Well, is it really lucky? Because literally every time you get knocked on your ass, you hard-headedly dust yourself off and get right the fuck back up and keep going. And everybody says, man, stay down, stay down. And you're like, I ain't got time to stay down, man. I'm a Sagittarius. And so they keep doing that and giving it a little time. You know, eventually something sticks, guys. Usually for people like this. <laughs> Okay, let's look at the sexual position. The Ten of Swords in love. Mainly, we see the Venus there. Here, we're going to see the Mars energy of sex, specifically. So, Ten of Swords over the Four of Pentacles. Let's look. Six of Cups. This is in their core values and lifestyle. In the Tower. You know, this is going to seem weird to you. You know what I got? This could be someone, they either grew up in the funeral business, could have been part of the lack mentality that they were involved in with their parents, maybe keeping that business alive during a period, uh, having watched uh, Six Feet Under. Uh, probably wasn't easy. That, I get a strong feeling of this. They could be in this business. They could be in this business, in the funeral business somehow, guys. Um, I get the feeling too with the Six of Cups and the Tower here. Um, this is someone that really values like uh, uh, something. I, it's, it could be the funeral home. Uh, it could be their childhood home. It could be something physical. Um, and they may, to the point that they may um, do whatever needs to be done to protect it, you know. Um, like somehow it's condemned and they still keep it and I don't know I go to real really go to extremes to the point of like bankruptcy essentially and with the six of cups over the tower I see this as a person that will put their passion their, their passion their love this is that energy of really feeling like soul connected it could happen with a person but I'll get back to the six in a minute but in love but um, in terms of, of love and what they put their passion into, it's going to be something that really it pulls at their heartstrings, you know, with that nostalgia. And they're willing to, you know, go burn for it. They're willing to take it really to the ground um, for what it is they love and believe in. I mean, they're the kind of person that would pull out all the stops to uh, save a family farm or save the family funeral home uh, and... Uh, maybe they turn it into a nightclub. I don't know. Something like that. But sexually now, we're dealing with the Sagittarius here. Uh, in terms of Venus, um, we have Mercury. Uh, 
in Aquarius, and I think you might have a, a Aquarius uh, Venus here too with this person. Um, you know, an Aquarius Venus exactly kind of is it could attach its love in a sense. Uh, Venus is also with what's beautiful to you, aesthetics in. Uh, what do you find desirable and what do you place value is all of your Venus um, and it could be something to do with that having to do with this uh, childhood home or something that they might invest in that's a big story I get with them um, because Venus in uh, Aquarius energy can be like that it's kind of universal in the way it loves here and this definitely speaks to a Capricorn Mars which also may be digging into this. So Capricorn Mars, if anybody can dig in, it's Capricorn Mars. Um, it, the Capricorn Mars is in it to win it, in it for the long haul. In terms of love and romance, you know, they're um, going to hang in there, this person. It, with the Aquarius Venus, um, they're only going to be interested in people that they can basically communicate with, that they respect, that they feel that there's some kind of deeper rapport with and with the Mars here I see like the way they're gonna make love and everything is very grounded kind of energy mostly gonna be feeling that Mars just in terms of love and romance you're gonna feel more of the Mars coming out um, wanting to take care of things definitely with a sense of like with the Venus energy and Aquarius they want to connect feel I could say feel like your friends first feel like you're the kind of people that could be friends that kind of connection and then when Mars comes in it's very uh, grounded uh, energy very sensual energy in terms of making love um, and it's also an energy in terms of relationship um, where they're gonna value uh, growth and having uh, not only a connection but like a plan together and that you're both working towards some common goal um, that you share so let me know, guys, if you relate to this. It, this is a, meant to be a predictive read. It's a little tricky. It's someone coming in right now. Probably not someone who's already uh, around you, but just coming in here at this end of November time frame into your life. So get back to me if you do find them, and give me a like or a thumbs up. <clears throat> tell a friend, tell a friend. If you think of anywhere to share this, any social platforms, free, please do. I can use a help and uh, do subscribe thank you guys